Hi, um, I'm going to do a video showing how you edit on GIMP using Sims and uh, Google Backgrounds. This is for a competition that we are in from Miss World on Twitter. And this is also for specifically well, for anyone who wants to join Miss World or anyone who wants to just do photo edits with their Sims or anything. And this is I'm making this video because of a contestant that needs help doing this. So this is GIMP. It's a free software and it's the, they say just as good as Photoshop but it's free. And what you need to do is you need to find the Google background. You need to take a picture of your sim and create a sim. Typically using a white background which we got a link from, what was it, from Zeta? Which is the person who runs the competition. She gave us a link, I think, me a link a long time ago. I have no idea. But Anyway, it's better to have creative sim poses, which I think most people have creative sim poses. I believe, unless they're a console player. Depend or if they don't use CC, it depends. You can always link everything in the description what yeah. people need. Yeah, okay, I will link every single thing you need for the creative sim poses, the white background, and everything. And the Zeta said the white helps because it's easier to cut out. Okay, so you need to go to file. You need to open. Okay, so there's a lot of renders already done because we just got, I just got done with the challenge three. But, and my mom and sister have to do their challenges in, in just a second, but I'm just gonna show an example here how in the world you do this. Um, where is my photo that? Uh, let's see, that's my man. Here's, I'll, I'll use Winnie. Okay, so you need to click on the photo you have of your sim and open the photo. This is Winnie. She's my my Miss uh, South Korea. And let's see. Um, for example, we'll get a background here. This is not the right background for her, but uh, which one do we use? That's a mammoth. <laughs> this one I use for. Uh, all right. So here's your photo. You need to also select the size that is good for. Well, it depends on what you're, you're doing exactly, but. Nicole, what was your photo size you use? My photo size that I like to use for this competition is 736 by 746. 746. <laughs> 746. Okay, so this is the, the size my sister likes to use, and it's a, it's a pretty, it's a decent size for the renders and stuff, especially because you usually have to go about knee up or about around there. Okay, so Winnie is, this is Winnie. Anyway, you need to, do <laughs> okay, so you go over here to this part with the eyeball, your little, little tiny thumbnail photo. You right click on your mouse and then you see this min drop down menu. You al add alpha channel. Because when you add alpha cha al al apple channel, you add <laughs> alpha channel. <laughs> you okay. It uh, tr creates a transparent background when you cut it out. So you go over here to the left to the fuzzy select tool, which is the little wizard wand, and you click on the background and you can also drag in or out. And I would recommend dragging outward because make sure if there's any white on the clothes or anything. Sometimes it's very stubborn with the white on the clothes. I'm warning you to be careful with that because if there's white on the clothes, you need to erase around the area that it's pre-selecting. Like sometimes it'll go like this in the clothes if there's white. But sometimes you can actually, you can drag, actually avoid out it. Yeah, drag out, out it, but this way. But sometimes you will have to erase it yourself. Erase around the shoulders or the arm or whatever part's catching. So then you delete. Okay, it's deleted. And then you click on the outside, the, the big gray part right here. Okay, so now you're left with this. There's like white outline, which is which you can fix by right clicking again on the same area where the alpha alpha channel is. You alpha to selection. Now that selects the whole part of the body around the outer edges, and you need to go up here to select, and you need to shrink. Make sure it's on one. Make sure it's on one. Do not have the selected area on either and you need to go to invert and then you need to push delete on your keyboard and look it most well I believe it gets, it gets, yeah it gets rid of the white this is just from the shine of the background the blue part it always has it on the backgrounds if it's like a lighter area and stuff so that we're, sometimes there's white and red spots get out of the armpit anyway anyway you can Another thing is you can do is right click on this and apple to selection it to get rid of the jagged lines. You go into select again and then you go to border and make sure it's on two and smooth. And push OK. Go into your filters. And then go to blur. And click Gaussian, Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur. I have no idea. Gaussian blur. You can preset it to whatever you're liking. We use 150 by 50. Like this. On the X says 150. 
And why is and 0 0.50 and then 1.50? And make sure they are unlinked. And then you push OK. And what it does, it doesn't work completely all the time. Sometimes they're still little jaggies, but they're very faded. And it blurs the outline, so it doesn't look so weird and jagged. And ignore the... Well, this is just the lighting. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but... <coughs> uh, let's see. You can also go to the colors, and this is how you brighten up your sims. We These are the presets we use. 15 by 13 on the brightness and contrast. Depending you on your sims' skin Yes, tone. depending on their skin tone. If they're darker skin, you need to sometimes adjust. Or if they're really pale, then you need to adjust <coughs> it also to make sure it's not too bright. But since Winnie is, a, I believe, a mid-skin tone, then... She is fine with this one. Saturation is dependent on the skin tone also, because sometimes you can go too orange, sometimes you can go too pay like uh, gray. So you need to have a good balance. Which this one works for Winnie because her skin tone is good with that one. And so now you have your sim uh, cut out and and colored with the saturation and stuff. You can also sharpen them with filters, and you go into enhance. And you go into sharpen, and then we have our presets right here. This is a good, nice preset. As you can see it, I'll leave it on screen for a second so you can actually see the preset. It's a nice, subtle sharpen. Is in the radius is on 1.574, and then the amount is 0 0.393. The threshold is in zero. As you can see in the preview, it does make a difference. And zoom into any. See? You can see it especially in the face. And then you push OK. And then you go to your background, which is just a white background at first. And you have to click on the photo. You have to click on this part right here next to the little tool presets and go into images. And then you click on your photo and you click on the scale tool. Now, there's a warning with the scale tool. This is one of the problems. All right. So you just drag out. But you have to make sure your scale is locked. If you do not lock your scale, it does this. It makes it squish. You don't want no squishing. No squishing. Especially your sims. You do not need to squish them and stretch them out. Keep it locked and it'll keep the image straight and locked into the background. And of course you, you, you can also lower the opacity to see exactly what you're getting in frame. Oh, no, that's way too far out. And you can scale it and then make sure your opacity is back up. Then you go back into images which are already on still. Go on, click on your sim, and then drag them in. Sometimes they're too big. You just gotta scale them down. And again, make sure you do it's not locked. Make sure your scale is locked. The chain has to be linked, otherwise you're gonna squish like this. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. That is a no-no. Do not unlink that chain unless you have something that requires a squishing. Just don't squish anything else. I'm calling it squish because it's gonna be squish. So, adjust your liking. Make sure your photo and your sim at least are down below the gray bar a little bit. Do not, if you don't, they will float and you do not want that either. Make sure that, I deleted her. Make sure, <laughs> make sure they're locked in with the, and have a bit of the, an edge on them. Or, now I made her huge again. Oh, uh, it's fine. Uh, anyway. So just make sure they're not floating or anything because it does not look very good and it kind of looks odd unless I can fly in general then that's fine but otherwise just make sure they don't float so always leave a little bit of space if you can at the bottom like this to make sure they don't go you know because if you do go above that line right here where the photo meets at the bottom then they'll float and that's not a good thing so you push scale and she is on the background. You can also adjust the background with colors like we did before. With the any of these, you can also use exposure on the sims. All this stuff can just be edited to your liking. The brightness and contrast you can always use to brighten up your photos and stuff a little bit if you want, or or whatever you depending what you want to do. But GIMP is really fairly easy to use, and it's it's it takes it might take a little bit to get the hang of. And then again, also, there is another way to do the sims, but it's a more tricky way, and it takes longer, so I prefer to use the Gaussian Blur. You can also smudge them with a smudge brush, and it takes longer, and you might get more humps, so I wouldn't really recommend that process. But, unless maybe you have a, a digital pen or tablet or something, you might be able to do it better, I'm not sure. 
<clears throat> but the collagen blur works and all around it's you know and then to get to get your sim exported because we have to we use face app and so for sims you need to file over here and then you export as and then you name your file and you export it and that's all you gotta do and that's how you use GIMP with the sims and cut them out it's really easy isn't it Nicole? once you get the hang of yes. it you'll it'll be a breeze yeah it's it's not that difficult it, it may take a little bit to learn but it's not that hard once you get the hang of it so hopefully this does help people and hopefully it, it especially if you want to join the competition then it'd be a big help there are a lot of people on, in the competition who are very nice who are regulars we've been joining for years now i think i, I think i'm like third year almost or so you've been joining for three years three. and i've been joining for three years three years yeah we've been each been in there for three years the host is very kind yeah and we always appreciate zeta we, we love zeta we love the contestants and everything everybody's really nice and friendly and and especially like to aggravate each other in the chat sometimes but <clears throat> anyway that is all you need to do and i hope this helps a lot of people especially if you just want to do editing and even if you want to do like um there's different other things you can do in GIMP, like the text and everything. There's, like, example here. Um, the text tool, you can do text. If, like, if it were, <laughs> pull it above the background first. If you have to do, if we have ever had to do text on our renders and stuff, but, I don't know, what have I done? Added a dot? I've now drawn and snipped it. Like, we've had to do text before on our renders and everything, and... You know, it just depends on what you get through the competition for that part. But some people want to probably do thumbnails and things like that. And it's pretty much the same process, isn't it? Except for the Google backgrounds. We just like to do a gradient for our thumbnails for our YouTube. But anyway, that's all you need to do. And I hope it helps a lot of people. And especially with the, the editing portion and stuff. So, bye! Bye!